Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the 19th Machine Learning with Python and Scikit-Learn tutorial video. In this video, we're going to actually test based on the data that we just built uh, in the previous video. So to do that, we're going to use back the same code pretty much back from tutorial number 15. So that's this code here. If you don't have it for whatever reason, it should be posted up on pythonprogramming.net. Eventually, you should probably save um, you know the the testing or the training and testing script as one version, and then the data building script or data creation, whatever, uh, as another script. But um, so, anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and just copy and paste the information from maybe apparently not. I guess copy and paste doesn't work anymore. <laughs> copy. Oh my goodness, what is happening? <laughs> what? Okay. Um, all right, maybe there, uh, maybe this this script has a bunch of space at the end. It must, yeah. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right, so here's our script, and we basically just need to make a, a couple of changes. First of all, we um, I'm just gonna delete that. So right now we're running off of the file keystats.csv, but if you guys remember, we were doing keystats underscore acc for accurate. ACC performance, and then all, we'll do with NA first. Uh, and then we, in theory, could run it here, but we're going to get an issue with uh, not a number values. So the next thing we want to do is you could do this either before or after the re index. It really doesn't matter, but we'll just do it right after. And we're going to say data underscore DF equals data underscore DF dot replace. And we're going to replace anything with not available. So up until this point, we've actually done no not available. Uh, and in fact, let's go ahead. Let's throw in no not available first. And then so for now, we're just going to replace um, NAN. So any NANs basically means not a number. Uh, and that's panda specific. Uh, stuff so it may be not a number was literally na for the value something like that uh, so we were returned not a number now uh, so when we do df dot replace you have to decide what you're gonna do with not available data so I thought we would do no na just to get around this but uh, let's do we'll do with na for now <laughs> and so you have to decide what you want to do with this data so what a lot of people will do or what some people will do is they just simply will not include any data that is missing uh, some people will take the data and replace it with a zero and then some people will take the data and replace it with some sort of astronomically um, outlying number. So, for example, uh, they might say, and so we'll run another dot replace. So, not a number will replace with zero. And then, in theory, some people might do, you know, not available, and they replace that with negative nine 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 nine. Okay, <laughs> they'll do something like that. And if your uh, script or if your machine learning algorithm can handle for outliers and just learn to ignore the outliers. Um, this is kind of a, a way of um, creating outliers. Now, what you'll want to do at the end of the day is kind of test with both. So for now, let's say not a number is zero, not available is zero. So a good kind of starting point um, for that. So we're running with not available data. So these are the changes that we, the only changes that we need to make, I believe, are, are made. So let's go ahead and run that and see um, how that works for us. So let me bring this over. So we've got 9,000 rows of data and our accuracy here is 53.8 which is actually uh, substantially lower than I usually see let's run it one more time uh, Mike's expectations when running based on this like this information was that you know 50% is is what you should expect uh, just simply because this isn't really um, what we're doing here is such a basic test, but uh, no, we, we continue. We're getting about 53% accuracy. Interesting. Um, when I did this myself, I, I swear it was like 60. Uh, let's just run it one last time, but two of these in this area is somewhat uh, defining. Okay, so now I got like 55. Okay, so now let's go ahead and we'll take away, we'll do no NA. We'll save and run that one. So with with or including um, the not available data 
or wait, wait, what did we choose? Okay, yeah, so this is no not available data, so 56 accuracy, 53 accuracy, relatively uh, close numbers here. So clearly we're seeing that the inclusion of not available data, at least when we're setting the value to equal zero, is relatively insignificant. Um, but now let, what if we change not a number to negative 999 and not available to negative 999? So this is no NA. Uh, you can see that our accuracy probably remains slightly unchanged. Let's run it again. Um, so somewhere in the you know lower 50s, and then, of course this one just gave us a 60%. Let's try it again. Okay, mid 50s, and this is with I can't even remember if it was no NAs. Yeah, so that's no NA. So basically this is null at the moment. Uh, but now let's do with not available. And also, what is our? I forget what our testing size is, but we, yeah, so it's a thousand. Um, that's a pretty decent size actually on the data. So including the the not available data, now we're seeing about a 53. So again, that's not really much different than the numbers that we had seen before, setting it at zero. Run it again. This one kind of takes a while. You can only imagine that you know this is why people want to really. Um, make their machine learning pretty efficient because we only have 9,000 rows of data um, which uh, is kind of borderline on, on what you want to do you know once you pass about 10,000 that's when you might want to think about doing something else but we're only waiting just a few seconds so I guess it, it's not a huge deal but anyway uh, so at this point you know you can do either negative 999 or you can do zero I'm gonna replace it with zero I think that's better, but you can do whatever you want. Changing those two numbers doesn't have any major effect on this particular example. So feel free to do you know whatever you want to do, and then whenever you're kind of doing it on your own, you just have to make the value judgment. You know, negative the negative numbers, especially negative nine nine nine, in terms of our data set. So we do we do normalize the data uh, with pre-processing scale. And so in theory, a negative 999 will be a massive outlier and it won't really, uh, it should be kind of ignored by the algorithm. So that's kind of some justification there, although the not available in my opinion is just, at least for now, probably best set as zero. But you can set it however you want. So now we have this accuracy that is at least above 50. I mean, every time we run it, we're slightly more accurate than than just pure, you know, random guess, okay? So somewhere between four and 9% right now, uh, more accurate. Uh, so from this point, you know, what, what do we do? Well, with machine learning, um, well, first of all, if you just think of like gambling in general, a lot of people treat trading like gambling and the idea is to make a tiny margin and just do it over and over over time. So a 54% margin, uh, or, or at least a 54% chance of being correct if you were to do a million trades, well, you're doing, you're, you're just fine, right? But the problem with investing in trading that people often forget is it's actually not about accuracy. Um, so you can be 80% accurate in your, in your trading, but if you're 80% accurate and you make a dollar every time you're accurate, but and you're 20% inaccurate, but you lose a hundred dollars every time you're inaccurate, um, you're, you're in the negatives, right? So if your accuracy is only just barely accurate in terms of how much money you make from that trade and your inaccuracy is just super detrimental, it's not good. So when it comes to something like investing, our question is, okay, we see our accuracy. Our accuracy is above 50%. That's a good sign. But actually, even below 50% would not be a, necessarily a bad sign because what if, you know, because we're basically training this algorithm to find outperforming companies. So in theory, the companies hopefully that we are incorrect about, say we're incorrect, we say that they would be an outperformer, but for whatever reason they weren't. In theory, or our hope is that those incorrect companies just slightly underperform the market. It's nothing major. And we're hoping that the, the companies that we were incorrect about that maybe did outperform the market, but we thought they underperformed, maybe they didn't. It doesn't really matter what those companies do because we're not in, in, involved with those companies. It would have been great if we could have been, but it doesn't really matter. What matters is 
the underperforming companies that we chose to invest in, how bad was it, <laughs> right? That's what we need to know. And then also, obviously, that's in relation to the winners that we picked. How good did they do? And we need to kind of figure out how we do. So from here, what we want to do is we want to back test it. And we actually have all of the data that we need to, to run a back test. And really, we're back testing in theory because we're testing the strategy right here. So we've already built the loop to back test. We have all of the data for the current value and the one year from now value. It totally fits into our um, not only our algorithm, but also our plans would be to buy and hold for a year and then, and then reassess. So that's what we're going to do, um, although in the next video, of course. But uh, yeah, so the next video, we're going to back test this and see, you know, let's just say we, you know, each trade, we put in $10,000 into a stock, hold it for a year. How did we do? Uh, and that's it. We'll do a real simple back test. So we're not going to have any logic in there that says, hey, we held it for a year and like, let's hold it for another year. We'll just assume we sold it and then we'll rebuy if it's a, a good position. We're not really accounting for trade cost. That shouldn't be a big issue with this because we are buying and holding for an entire year here. So, you know, we, we, we can account for trade costs maybe like down the road or something, but this is not really a highly frequently traded you know, strategy, all right, we're one trade per, or we're basically holding every trade for one year fixed. So obviously that's another issue is um, ideally you would have some sort of uh, not necessarily stop loss in the sense of stop loss in price, but stop loss in fundamentals. So if the fundamentals got to a point where you were like, mm, that's really bad, you know, some sort of like a stop loss trigger and, and get rid of the company. So anyway, the next thing we're going to do real simple basic back test just to see are we even are we in the green yet and if we're not how can we kind of tweak this to get into the green and if we are in the green great so anyways that's what we uh what you guys have to look forward to if you have any questions or comments on this particular video uh feel free to leave them below otherwise as always thanks for watching thanks for all the support and subscriptions and the donations and until next time